Paula, come here. Andrew, JLP, come here. Who's not shame? Who's not shame? Every time the PMP carry no got constitutional court, PMP win. Which means that the Jamaica Labour Party government is incompetent. And they don't know the constitution. How can you have a government who doesn't know the constitution of a country running the country? It's time for you to pack your bag and go. It's time for you to demit office because you have proven to the people of Jamaica that you are not competent for office and it's time for you to go. Paula, sing a sanky, my lady. Sing a sanky, council. Pack your bag and go. Constitutional law says that your position is unconstitutional. Bye-bye for now. What good Paula. Thanks to Mark Jefferson Golding and the People's National Party, represented by Philip Powell, who represented the people of Jamaica, and to ensure that our constitution is preserved. Power to the people. Power to the people. Time come, and time come now. Supreme Court rules. DPP extension invalid. That simple means, say, the DPP Paula Llewellyn have left her office today with immediate effect. So that means eh, she's supposed to uh, pack up right, right now. But here we go on, people. The JLP say they bring it to the appeal court. They might go appeal it. Why the JLP, the Jamaican Labour Party, and Jewelness administration have to be so corrupted? Why they might go appeal court? Why they might hide? Why they want this woman to stay in her office? Huh? Chaja. But me I tell us the people, bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Me hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful day. Now my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every and uh, any situation, just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray. Because a prayer day, keep the devil away. Now my viewers and my subscribers. The Supreme Court have ruled that the DPP extension is invalid. We have all of this to come up. So remember to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Alright, let's move forward. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform and before i'm gonna further i just want to say to each and everyone that subscribed to my channel thank you all for 89 thousand subscribers we almost a 90 thousand people we almost a 90 thousand with the 89 thousand subscribers right now blessings and hannah thank you to each and everyone that subscribed to my channel all right one family one community now people before me touch the topic more I want to talk about something before I touch the topic, people. Before I start off the video, I want to make a correction to somebody that leave a comment on my video last night. Yeah, man. Some of you know say you watch today. Some of you listen to me very, 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 very carefully. So this is the comment that the person leave. So Peggy Stewart said, as since JLP take over Falmouth, Falmouth in our better condition because Falmouth used to this and Falmouth used to that. Now, Peggy Stewart, let me correct you on something. Portia Simpson Miller was the one that upgraded Falmouth. It was in Portia Simpson Miller time. The wharf built up, the fire station built up, the police station built up, the market start. And the bus park did also build up as well. But PNP did lose the election. So that is why Andrew Wallace administration inherit Portia Simpson Miller projects. All of the hotels that you see down that side, PNP 
approve all of those hotels for bill. Andrew Wallace not approve not even one all now. Not even one. Them not approve none, none, none at all. The hotel where did for bill up a centen, three thousand bedroom. A Andrew Wallace met that the hotel and start it. So when I talk about building up place, PNP is the one that build up your parish. If you if you live in your own parish, you know. Let me tell you, a PNP bill of a parish, a PNP bill of a wharf, a PNP bill of a fire station, a PNP bill of a police station, Andrew Wellness only finished them up. He still not do nothing for one down there. So let me give you a little history for one of self. You understand? So stop in eyes if you don't know where you're chatting. Because Jamaican Labour Party have not done nothing for that parish. Gaja, Gaja, Colin Gaja, which is the mayor for Falmouth. Only a suck out on the yai ball, him jai jai jai. Him na do nothing for no. Nothing at all, him na do for no. Make you and tell you that. So, if you're colorblind, let me teach you a little history. Bye bye. Anyway, people, back to the topic. So people, Andrew Wallace lose again. The Jamaican Labour Party lose again. The Constitutional Court has struck down the second extension of the Turner of Director of Public Prosecution, Paula Llewellyn. The Constitutional Court has struck down the second extension of the tenure of Director of Public Prosecution, Paula Llewellyn. People, remember when them extend our time, Mark Golden, make on no plane and street say, he ma bring it to the court because that is unfair. And they ma breach the constitutional right. Now, a lot of people did say Mark Golden just a waste him time because nothing now come out of it. Now, on the look what go on. On a look at one people, she has to leave office today with immediate effect. So, them have to appoint a new DPP. Now, a lot of people have said unfair, but this woman is so unfair because remember, as she talked in her interview, say, she used fake evidence allegedly to sentence people. And on a vibes cartel alone, she, 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 she um, right she breach. And a vibes cartel alone, she use a fake evidence for sentence. She do it with holy more people. That's what she say out her own mouth. 
and I for sure use corrupted jury for sentence innocent people. Can you imagine how many innocent youths this woman put behind bars with her wicked self? And who not say a wickedness? Now, we are going to hear from the PNP lawyers, Philip Palwell, and one of the leader attorney on this matter. But people, this is a big win for the Jamaican people because this woman should not leave office a long time. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, could you, before we go into it, can you just state your name, title, who you represent it, and then you can give us your reaction to this morning's ruling? Michael Hinton, of Council for the Clemens. The When we started our submission in this case, the first thing that we said yes. is that the case is not about this case. It's not about how she did that it's not even really about the extension of the age. The case is about the rule of law, about establishing a principle that the same laws apply to everybody, and that the Constitution needs to be respected. And we think that's what the court's ruling has indicated today. So um, we are pleased with the ruling, the result of the court effectively saying that the Constitution requires you to see the case. Everybody in the same way and not make special problems. Does this mean now that the DPP will have to step away from office? As of today. Yes. As of today. And there's no further challenge that she can make? Well, I don't know what the um, government will do this for us. Okay. Mr. Paul, what's your reaction? Well, I'll start in pretty much the same way. We have always said that this was not about Mr. Levin. And it's more to do with our fundamental belief and respect for the Constitution. There's also an important statement on governance. A lot of these things can be avoided, you know, if there is respect for the opposition in power. And this matter could have been dealt with by a conversation with the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, and which is what the Constitution requires. And if that were done, and respect is given, then we wouldn't have this unfortunate situation of where a public servant is um, being embarrassed. So I regret that aspect of it for, for sure. But I, I believe that um, the judgment was a good one. You, you mentioned that if, the, if there was a conversation, um, you know, there would be no embarrassment. But I'm not sure if this question is for you or for the opposition leader. Would the opposition be minded then to agree on a further extension? The way a country is run is by people recognizing the role and position of each other, the roles and position. And sometimes these matters are settled by the leaders. In a room, you submit the Vale Royal, um, confab, and uh, that is how a mature democracy operates. We shouldn't have to be in Parliament one day summer to pass a law um, without the requisite respect and uh, um, consultation being done. And, and I think this is fundamentally a commentary on that. Mr. Powell, given this ruling, can we expect to see the, gover the opposition Challenge, bringing more matters like this in matters where they feel like they feel like the government did not, you know, break the post, some protocol or did not consult with them in a way that the constitution dictates. We are quite clear. Our role is to protect the integrity, the sovereignty of the constitution, and anywhere we see violations, we are going to pursue. Thank you. So after the court made the ruling about parallel willing should step aside the government to appeal today's constitutional court ruling what them have a hide i don't know but they'll write chuck say them are gonna appeal it it come like them not tired to lose but people this is why i'm saying minister of justice they'll write chuck says the government will be appealing the constitutional court ruling that was handed down today. The court ruled that a second extension of the Director of Public Prosecution, Paula Llewellyn, Jr., 
is uh, unconstitutional. In a statement this afternoon, Mr. Chuck said the government took note that the application of the DPP to the extend her tenure to age 65 as a provider under the act has been ruled unlawful. Now, Mr. Chuck, you know what you need to do? You need to go appeal on a cell phone office. You and your people, them, well, I don't know why in the office there. And Joe Wallace said, well, I don't know. If you appeal on a cell phone office, because imagine, imagine, you're not tired of making bad decisions. You're not tired of betraying the Jamaican people. Why don't why I go, why don't I go appeal now, Mr. Chuck? Me want to know. So, kindly tell us why you're going to appeal. Because that woman passed the age long time. She should not ret retire a long time. On an external state two time. Unconstitutional. And now you want to appeal? Now you want to appeal? You better resign. The government of Jamaica does not agree with this part of the ruling of the Constitutional Court and will instruct its attorneys to ask for a state of execution and immediately appeal the ruling. Ono never agreed to nothing yet. All Ono agreed to is corruption. And you, the right chuck, use nothing but corruption, and you are the one of the worst justice minister ever, ever, ever. Greece, Jamaica. You're one of the worst justice minister. Just like your prime minister, one of the worst. Yo, may I tell you, you see that set of people here, what they have in office, say, them, them, are the, them are the Jamaican. Are the worst set of people them ever take office in a Jamaica? They're worse than Siaga. They're worse than Edward Siaga. May I tell you, say them, yo, I want a wicked set of people, them, your man. You don't lose the trust of Jamaican people. The people not trust you now, you know? And then now, for no just shut on the mouth, take it loses. Because you know, so you know, on the nose, on the wrong, on the table, go appeal court. On the why Jamaican people are getting hit on the nose. On the why Jamaican people don't like on no more. Because on the nose, nothing but a bunch of corruption. Trust me. On the leave, man. This court has ruled that section 2.1 of the act is constitutional. Section 2.1 of the act has amended the constitution as regards the retirement age of the director of public prosecutions. Section 2.2 of the act is not a valid section and is severed from the constitution because the process remains unchanged for extending the retirement age. Section 2.2 is unconstitutional, null, void and of no legal effect. In bringing the case to the courts, opposition leader Mark Golding had asked the court to rule on the constitutionality of the amendments to sections 96.1 and 121.1 of the constitution. The opposition argued that the government hurriedly pushed the bill through parliament and maintained that it was not consulted on the matter. The amendments facilitated the change in retirement age for the DPP and Auditor General from 60 to 65 years. The bill, which was piloted by Justice Minister Delroy Chuck, was introduced on July 25 last year, then debated and passed in the House of Representatives on the same day. It was approved in the Senate three days later. The amendment meant Paula Lowland could continue in office for at least another two years. It was a second extension for Miss Lowland, who received a three-year extension in 2020 when she turned 60. All I can say to my fellow Jamaican people, I hope you see the whole heap of wrongdoings that Andrew Wallace are doing. I hope you see for yourself. I hope you look out on the yard. I hope you the people out of every kind on the yard ball and see the amount of wrongdoings that this government are doing and then we got extra miles for the wrongdoing then we got extra miles for the corruption I hope you don't see for all of the people them we are follow back them but them color blind I hope you don't look out on who on a yard Paula Llewellyn should have gone in yard how much years now but still cock up in the office because 
them, the JLP, have something to hide. Where them look like, say, them no want to appoint one next DPP. And this person come around now and come expose them. But anything where in the dark, it a go come to light. Paula Llewellyn, this is your final stay in the office. Me know you maybe don't pack your bag already and you maybe a shed some tears and you are crying and Joe Wallace have you up on his shoulder. By the way, talking about Andrew Joe Wallace. From the other day, oh, oh, oh Andrew Wallace gone so silent. We not hear from Andrew Wallace. We not hear from Andrew Wallace again. And we not hear from whether I liar one in him, the one in here like Yale Clark. We not hear from them again. Oh, them gone so silent, people. Oh, Andrew Wallace, Andrew Bramwell, and Lijal Clark get so silent all of a sudden. I wonder if they have nothing to say about Paula Llewellyn being removed, kicked out of our office by the Supreme Court. I wonder what them have to say. Because they're supposed to cry to you. Know? Because I don't know what secret Paula Llewellyn have for them make them afraid to let her go. She reached the age of retirement and every minute they might extend her stay. What could I cast it? And not just that. But they want to name Evrala Muma Long Tongue Lashi. What secret him have for them too? Because he's afraid to let go of these people. But people still the talk down below in the comment section. I did promise you one video and I'm going to play this video for you guys right now where when the Jamaican Labour Party win the election and them trim every Rasta man where them can trim they walk around and them trim every Rasta man and them beat them chop up them and then sitting there yeah me can't forget that because my grandfather tell me about it and my grandfather also showed me a big chop in him head where then hold him and trim off in locks and the soldier take his gun and give him one lick in the head knock him out cold 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 yeah man and tie them up on light post and beat them and then something there they have to run go hide in a hole in a cave in a bush they have to live in a cave i saw they used to deal with rasta people and that's why i said no rasta man at all should never respect the Jamaican Labour Party because they are such a wicked and cruel set of people. And any Rasta, any man who say them a real Rasta man and support Jamaican Labour Party. Fire for you. Fire for you. Your locks for catch a fire. Remember that. But people, check out this video and listen to it very carefully because these are some very valid information you are about to receive to your ears. Alright, so remember to leave a like on this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. Turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend or family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. And thank you guys for 89,000 subscribers. Alright, big up on yourself. I'm out. I have said it before that the government of Jamaica, at the level of the executive, needs to develop a social media protocol that regulates how ministers of government utilize the social media platforms to update the public about their official work and their official role. Now, even if the claim by Minister Terrellong that these posts were done by an officer in his staff are true, that does not exempt the minister from the need to provide a genuine apology to the public. For after all, it is he who is the minister and not this unnamed officer in his staff. And therefore it is he as minister who is responsible for what goes out on his social media to the public. Oh, good morning. It is the 29th day of March, a 
And this morning, my feature, interesting facts. My interesting facts this morning is about Good Friday morning on the 11th of April, 1963. It was important, it is important to know that it was on this morning, this Good Friday morning, that Jamaica has seen one of the most, this biggest and the most disgraceful discriminations against the Rastafarian community. In a place in St. James called the Coral Gardens, the massacre of many Rastafarians took place. Some even lost their life. Up till this time, no one knew the correct count of the loss of life. And up till this day, these people are still quarrying for recompensation, for compensation, and for justice. It was of no great reasons for that special group of people to undergo so much discrimination. But because of jealousy and fear of, and let's drop in ignorance, of not knowing exactly what the Rastafarians were about in those times. The look of the lion, the speak of genuine love, the love and the care, the agape love of the Creator was being spoken at that time. Genuinity, naturality, they were coming with a message that weren't going too well against the ruling political party at the time. And with ignorance and fear, they tried to put an end to the movements kill it before it rise. The People's Progressive Science this morning takes great pleasure in edifying, spreading the gospel or the truth of what took place on the 11th of April, 1963, many of you are not here now. I was six years old at the time. And it still lingers. I, I can still remember hearing the news. I were far away from St. James. But I can remember our little transistor radio did bring over that news quite frequently. That huge discrimination, massacre of humanity took place because arrogant, because of arrogance, lack of knowledge, jealousy, and fear by some of our unlearned leaders. Remember to continue to support this channel. Interesting Fox 
come to you with the courtesy of the people's progressive science endeavored to take you to the truth from the root. Share it. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. We are all around the people's progressive science endeavored to bring the truth from the roads. I'm out.